memory glows green, turns into a little fairy alien man, and he does his purification ritual. He says more Latin stuff, and then he's like, Pure, or whatever. And he purifies the core. And uh, the thing is, the Zondar core attaches to a person, infuses it with Zondar metal, and that makes the big monster that uh, absorbs machines and different things to become a huge monster. And then you purify it, you pull out the cure core, purify it, the metal's gone, the person's fine, it's good. But explosions and it sucks. And it ain't over yet. And it's a whole bunch of mecha beasts. Kind of had uh, enough of this shit, but Asher is like, ah, go, 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 ah, nice attack. But now you are d too weakened to fend off Doctor Hell's attack. And the uh, guy tells Asher to shut it and will never submit to his evil. And then he tells Mamory to take the Zondar Metal victim and get the hell out of here. Asher uh, offers Guy the chance to kneel at his feet. And he'll be uh, get a painless death for it. And guy like never, I'll never bow to the likes of you. And neither is Koji Kabuto and his friends. And Koji's like, hey, who would bow at your stinking feet, Baron Ashura? Guy's worried about the state of uh, Mazinga though. It's looking a bit beat up. But Koji says, thanks for the worries, but. Me or Tetsu or any others, we can't just sit by and watch this go on. And Ashura is confident he can take on both Mazingas because he already destroyed the getter. But Koji says, as long as he's alive, they'll never give up. And Guy's like, hell yeah, also same. As long as there are people with such evil and hatred in their hearts, they'll fight on until they're destroyed. And then Ashura's like, ah, shut it, idiots. Mechabee squad, destroy them. And Koji, Boss Sayaka, and Tetsu are eager to beat this nerd up. If only to get revenge for the Ghetto Boys. And they want uh, Astro to. Yeah, there he goes. Uh, come check out the strength of the Super Robot Army. But yeah, they all start at like 80% health, yeah, because they're beat up. Did you can fly? Which is really good. And he has sword cut because Great Mazing is always running around with a fucking sword. And uh, Boss has got a cape because he's good and cool. And there's uh, Sayaka who's still good. Mm. So Fire Wars, Fire Wars, and then I don't know why she's got something different. But there you go. Oh no, it's because of the train she's on. They, they should all have Fire Wars. This isn't Shin Koji, this is old Koji. Double F. Mecha Beast, Mecha Beast and Douglas. Mecha Beast Douglas? not the drill pressure punch yet. And then his boss, he's got all the same stupid bullshit that he always has. From his, from boss, Mucha and Nuke. Minion and idiot. And Saka. She's the same old support lady as usual. Time to evade. Yeah, go on then. 
Bring it on the way down. Garuda. Sanda Breaker. Rocket Punch. Photon Beam. Must be Rust Hurricane then? Yeah, it must be Rust Hurricane. Breast Fire and Breast Burn are their two big moves. Actually, the, he's got the Scrander Missile thing where he does the Big Bang or whatever. For Great Mazinga, but regular Mazinga. All this fella does. Yeah, Rust Hurricane. Low his armor by 30%, it's pretty good. Is this breast burn? Got drill pressure punch, iron cutter, breast burn. Yeah, breast burn. It's good. Why you only get one of them? Give this idiot another thunder break. RGZ, RGZ, Rocket Punchy, RGZ, RGZ, Sanda Budega. It's the most bored special move. You too, Baron Ashera. Great Mazinga. Hush up, hush up, hush up. First, I'm going to heal that guy up. Then gonna heal this guy. And we're gonna heal this guy. It's breast fire. Rocket punch. Iron cutter. I think that's iron cutter. Which is rocket punch, but with fucking knives sticking out of him, big axes, and then uh... let's see if this is iron cutter. Yeah, let wonk. Then you can combo that to like get loads of nerds in a line.
don't really want to pull out no Zonda cores of these guys yet because that uses up a lot of our juice. We'll just protect shade it and be fine. Okay, well he can shoot a man from far away though, so I will. Ah, I sure can't believe this shit. <laughs> no one can overcome my cyborg body in the G-Stone's courageous radiance. Behold the might of Gal Gai Gar. Love that guy. And then Koji's like, come on, Mecha Beast, I'll fight you for Rio too, as in Ryoma. And Tetsuya's like, you're in trouble if you think I'm as green as Kabuto. Come at me, you better be ready. So after you bop him a lot, where's Baron Asher? Okay, yeah, so Asher's like, dang it! Stop fighting! Ugh. Koji tells Baron Asher to give up, we're not going to lose. And Asher's like, fine! Check these Mecha Beast out, fuckers. Uh, Luke and Mitch just start panicking about how much, uh, how many enemies there are, and Buster's like, you idiots! With Koji here, and the Triple G unit, there's no guy! No way we can lose! And Koji's like, dang it, Astro, can't you just fucking give up? And then the guy's like, fear not, Koji Kibuto, you're not in this fight alone! And then, uh, back up. It's us. Uh-oh. Bullfog identifies the printer Gundams and Guy is uh, thankful for Tiger uh, doing the the foresight in hiring us. Kazma's like, damn, all this hot blood. And he's like, humanity will not give in to your evil. Our courage will lead the way to victory. What the? And Duo introduce uh, Mazinger and Triple G doing Miras. Kazma's okay, he's fine, just getting too excited. And there's tensions in the red zone. And Bless tells him to be careful because it's his first fight in gravity. But Asher are ready for such a thing. Flies over and yoinks uh, Sayaka, and then he goes, Ha ha, Koji Kudo, if you don't want anything to happen to her, you better kill all your friends. And Koji's like, Shit, fuck, I got, I got nothing on that. But, Volfog and Guy, I got a plan. And they're like, Do what he says, uh, yeah, come on, come with the plan. They got it, they got the plan, sure thing. So uh, they tell uh, Koji to do what he says and fight us for real. He's like, what? No. He's like, just do it. we got a plan. He's like, okay. And Kazuma's like, what the? He's he turning on his allies like that. And Koji's like, I don't like it, but I'll trust in my friends. I'm going to fight with everything I got. And then uh, Bless tells Kazuma to do the same and says, a chance to turn the tables will come. And D-Boy's done sulking. Uh, but he wishes he could help here, and Bernard's like, hmm. As we both focused on the Radom threat, we'd uh, ignored what was going on down here. Ooh. And then uh, they had to play such a heavy burden on that Mazinger boy. And now they can only trust that things are going to turn out alright. And now we got to get fucking murdered by our good friend. Well... Kyoryujin and the other one, whose name I can't remember, their combined form is Choryujin, as in Super Ryujin, Super Dragon Man. Hella, Hella Dragon Man, chose Hella, Hella Dragon Man. But, Volfog just fucking murdered that dude straight up. He's fucking dead now. He died. Because he tried to fuck with Volfog. Okay, but now all these idiots are in the sea. So she's got to transform to get out of the sea. These idiots are... Just going to have a shitty time. But... He 
Isn't he, uh, doesn't he have water type movement? Yeah, he does, I guess. Oh, yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to do him, then. I don't want to do anything with our good f friend. Because then he can't use... Bless. Nice work, buddy. Nice work, buddy. You're doing it. Uh... Sure, he'll fucking boss. Who fucking cares? Yeah, this sucks. If you, if you get this at the wrong time and get it on the enemy turn so they all get to fucking, like, the reinforcements get to murder you, it sucks. It super sucks. Volfog's good. He's a, he's a policeman. Is this arm missile? I think this is arm missile. I think he does a thing and then he flies up behind you and shoots missiles out of his elbows. I think that's what Tetsuya does. Nope, just uh, just a regular rocket punch for this guy right now. Chowling, Mecha Beast Scum. I think they can break through the Protect Shade, but the Protect Shade is really fucking good. <laughs> it's holding out his hands there. I'm gonna block it! I'm gonna block it! Ah! Fuck, well, I can't stop posing now. It's okay. I think he's now low enough that he's now super fucking ripped again. Mazin power, which I believe is 20% extra damage. It might be 30%. Might be that good. But both uh, the Mazin boys got it. Oh yeah, real fucking mature, Koji fucking Kabuto. I don't wanna fight you, but I will. Mm -hmm. Koji. Yeah, <laughs> Tetsuya, I never thought we'd have to fight like this, Kabuto. Don't hold back, Tetsuya, I don't have that luxury. This is going to be the first and last real Mazinger fight. Breath the fire. Is that all you got, Kabuto? Order of the day. He let this idiot, this goofball, with our magical spells. Then we fly over here and repair this goofball with our fuel. And unfortunately, we can't be good no more. I'm gonna shoot a missile at Koji Kabuto. It's the big one. 
right in the d <laughs> doesn't even actually blow you up it just flies into it, like rides it to punch you in the face and then we got the assist from death sight Oh, these guys can't fucking go anyway yet, they're garbage. Uh, can they make it? I think they can make it there, so yeah, we'll move our friendly neighborhood. Hell, dude. Oh, we can't get an assist from that guy anyway. Ah, oh, no, you fucking can't, whatever. Fully we'll restore ally hit points, that guy. I think if you kill him over and over, like, you can kill him over and over again for loads of money, but... That's extremely low. So we'll just beat him up with the... with the ladders. I'm Koji Kabuto, hope to see you around! Saki, but there you go. Oh, yeah, he's full, isn't he? Never mind. Self destruct, but Borato. Most Borato sucks. Same as ever, but he's got a cape, so. <laughs> he makes a funny face. Let's go, knuckleheads! Using all of the processing power of the DS on this perspective shit. Bogta, nice work. Boss got a fucking kill. Don't kill him! Doubless! Oh, got him! Oh, and then his arm broke. Shit. It's okay. Boss is good. Oh, you son of a bitch, Kabuto! K Kabuto! Does he have what these idiots say? No. But he's like, Kabuto, I don't want to fight you. You're cool. Did you really have to fucking breast fire me, though, dude? That's okay, though. You can heal us 60% of our hit points, which ain't bad. I 
don't know if you do get anything for attacking, for blowing up that guy. I think he, no, I don't think I'm going to bother, I'm just going to murder this nerd. Uh, first we will resupply our good friend here. Yeah, we're not doing, we're not doing that much. I will shoot him, I will shoot him with another big thing. Could get him with another combo though, actually. He's got support. Fucking boss. Boss couldn't do it. Boss can't do shit, he's bad. Ah, oh, fuck. Shoot with the Vulcans for a big 50 fucking damage. Nice work. Am I gonna trust in fucking boss? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna trust in the boss Borot to save the day. Don't fuck it up, boss. Nah, that ain't happening. I need the much bigger. I need the biggest move I got for that, and it's neither of these. We'll see what boss can do. We'll see what boss can do. I don't think he can do much. Yeah, do the biggest move you got, boss. And this is... Let's find these idiots. Sorry, I know you came to help me. We're still gonna. We'll save your girl, I promise. You're alright, buddy. What's your name? Kazuma Radigan. I'm Koji Kabuto. Hope to see you around. But when this doesn't do it, I'll just load. Because I really want the double money from this one. I wasted my hero's thing, but I think she's got enough where she can do two, so it's fine. Yeah, as long as I haven't done his, we're good. Yeah, I like, guess fine. That's fine. I don't mind. There's others with that. Nice to meet you, kid. It's me. Koji Kabuto. Koji freaking Kabuto. Hmm, now that... That might be enough, is the thing. That might be enough with the crit. Ok, 
Okay, good. Phew. We set. Cheer from that. Bless from that guy. can't plasma execute him, but we can ray blade him. Let's ray blade him, let's do it. And boss can fucking help. If you fight uh, Koji with Guy, they have a convo. Koji, hang in there. Baron Asher has to slip sometime, and then we'll strike. I'm counting on you, Guy. Try to dodge. Up to you, Volfog. We need them if we we want. Uh, we need them if we want to turn this around. Kabuto, I, I. Then you cry on me now, boss. You gotta save Sayaka. Wow. Nice work, Mihiro. Got him. Two levels. Prevail up to level three. <sighs> Koji. Koji's like them. Even Mazinger can't stand up to uh, you guys. Guy calls out to uh, Ashra that Mazinger is disabled and demands that he releases Sayaka. And Ashra's like, no, nope. Ashra. And he says, uh, ah, ha, ha, the last thing I want Koji to see is me killing Sayaka before I kill him. Mazinger's it. And then Volkov's like, now. Mal and Kurt show up. With Asher in their sights. Got him. What happened? Got him. And then the, the, te the tech Carmen. Which is like a Tekka man, but different. <laughs> um, the Iron Mask and then it's like, Oh no! He has shot us perfectly on the hinge of the cargo hatch, which has opened it! Oh no! Sayaka has fallen out, and now Mao has rescued them! Shit! And then Duan Quattro amazed at the uh, special recon teams at work, and Asher's like, ah, fuck, retreat, Mazinger's demolished, whatever, work done. But Koji's like, I'm not done yet. He says he'll risk his life if he needs to, to take Asher down. And then the Koji tells Mazinger that he's made it a demon by fighting uh, his own side, and thanks, uh, and he says, thank you for all the battles you fought by my side. And then he asks, uh, says, one last time, lay down your life with me. You can't fight anymore, and let's get vengeance on Ashura. And as Koji Kaburo fucking kills himself, everyone uh, ordered him to get the fuck out. Anyway, the guy's like, sorry, I couldn't help more. Voss is crying because Koji died, and so she's like, we don't have time for that. When uh, we went back to the battlefield, the remains of Mazinger was nowhere to be found between someone took it, and that's probably Dr. Hell. And no doubt this man, with the brain of a demon, has got something bad in mind with uh, Mazinger's remains, so we've got to try and stop it without Koji, because he's fucking dead. Koji Kabuto died, just like Jesus on Christmas. Tetsuya tells everybody to uh, get back and repair their stuff to, and repair, because we've got to... Uh, He's going to go back to the photon power lab and try and sort this mess out. Yeah, he's not going to be uh, able to take uh, Tiger's recommendation, but Guy understands what's important now is for Tetsuya to focus on Dr. Hell. Inside Triple G's headquarters is Tiger, the Golden Tiger. Uh, he's like, damn, Koji Kabura, Mazinger's dead, huh? Hmm. Uh, here's that from Freeman, who you get to finally see his full face. And he's like, hmm. Losing that blow to our firepower is going to impede our plans a bit, but Tiger's got uh, some ideas about that. He says, leave negotiations to me. So he's going to call in some famers with uh, Hugo Ageki, 
who's a big Ripter dude, and he's like, yeah, and their favours that Hawkeye uh, won't dare refuse. And here's Leo Shishio, he's a uh, guy's dad, and he tells Freedom that uh, the item he designed looks like it's feasible, and uh, Honda and Levin are already uh, hard at work on it. And Freeman says, uh, I don't think that anything other than you guys' expertise with super AIs could have pulled it off in a reasonable amount of time. But time to go say hi to the new ar uh, arrivals, including the representative from Mithril. Time to... The, the big plan to commence. Project W. No more crying, no more shedding of tears. The future of the planet hangs in the balance. Uh, Lady Eun's worried that, uh, about more than just that. If the girl Joe and Quattro were checking up on in the colonies is used for evil... The Earth will be once again plunged into chaos, and I think that's Marimaya. On board the Tuha de Danan, there's Tessa, as usual, and Kalin, and they're like, Damn, Sosuke's really off to a rough fucking start with this mission. And Kalin's like, I hoped you'd learn some valuable experience, but this is way beyond what I expected. Uh, but Sosuke is equipped to deal with everything, including getting slapped as uh, got a tango with Zondar and Dr. Hell. Ooh. But... Tess is glad he's still on the job, and they both agree it was a good idea to have Mao and Kurtz uh, on station in the area. Uh, Kaladin's not so sure about having, like, fulfilling Triple G's request, but Tessa, as a full colonel, says things are evolving far faster than the folks back in the war room could have imagined. Only by cooperating with the other organisations can Mithra hope to carry the day, and working with the Triple G may well conclude uh, the Three Soldiers' missions a little bit sooner. And that means that whispered candidates like uh, Chidori are much safer. But, only for as long as they're useful, unfortunately. And Tessa can only hope the Tiger lives up to his reputation if she's going to start negotiations. Hi, Mom. From Mardukas. And here's Mal filling in a log. Uh, the Angel has been sent home along with her pet, uh, which uh, set back the schedule an hour. Sosuke then gets in and uh, kind of like, What's it like to grow the beautiful high school girl, huh? So I, if there's no way I could blend in as a high school student, I'm too old. But oh, there's only much, uh, only so much I can do: stand and hang out inside my invisible uh, arm slave at an arm stretch. Ah. Oh. And then he says he's all stressed out from avoiding stepping on old guys or running into buildings. But Sosuke was like, "Well, it was you guys that saved everyone from the Zonda, so you did pretty good." And they're like, "Yep, G Island City is going to become the epicenter for a whole lot of mayhem before everything's done." But. uh... Thank God Callan and gave him some uh, arm slaves, huh? As for the angel, Chittery, she's on the phone to her family in America. And she's not in the shower undressing as Kurt's hoped. Uh, and they've tapped the phone and Sosuke's listening. And he learns that Chittery doesn't hate him. She, uh, She's calling him the interesting kid. And Mal's like, damn, nice. Says, uh, heal on your wounds and have a nice uh, rest. Tomorrow's going to be another rough day. And Sosuke's uh, looking forward to it. He's finally found that this to be a most worthwhile job after all. Meanwhile, somewhere fucking shitty near Tokyo is Pazda, and he summons forth his four machine kings. Polonaise, who's a boat. Uh, Primada, who's a lady who turns into a car, I think. Pizza, who's a dude with a big nose who I don't think turns into anything. He's just a dude with a big nose. And Pensionon. Oh no, Pensionon's the boat, yeah. He's the clown that turns into a boat, and uh, Polonaise is the train, and he's got a pipe and he smokes it because he's a train. Uh, Pazdar tells them that a meeting between uh, those obstructing their plans is all uh, happening under one roof in G Island City. Uh, Pensionar has a plan for dealing with that. He's going to uh, use Inubusaki, whose pent up stress uh, will surely destroy Triple G. Uh, that's that guy there who's losing his fucking mind. Uh, Pizza likes the plan, says that he's got someone he wants to meet in person too, and Pazdar tells him to hurry. Once, uh, since the Radom and Evil Looters have already begun their invasion, they must finish their Zondar metal plant and mechanize the planet at once. And he promises the weak-hearted ones of Earth that they will soon feel his power. But the deal with the Zondar is they find someone who's really grumpy, and then they amplify your bad feelings, and that's pretty much in fight. In fight, ba 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 ba, and we'll sell that again. Cause I uh, I'm not selling that. That's good. That's support defense. Cartridge, oh yeah, that's the cartridge. That's the full thing. 
Okay, and then power parts on the Galgaya. We give him the armor. So it makes his thing more likely to activate. He's also slow. So he's going to get that off of that guy, off of Kazuma. So now he's much faster. He's like 7 now, instead of 6. And we've got a support defense. Who wants support defense, huh? I mean... The battleship's pretty good at support defense. Galgai Gar's pretty good at support defense, seeing as he's literally fucking invincible. He just holds up his hand and he's like, no, talk to this, fuckers. And then I'm gonna give him a couple of defense, just because it makes his thing better. Uh, the two brothers share their points, whatever you spend on one, the other one gets two, I believe. And they use mostly melee, but they do have some range, so they want uh, some accuracy. A little bit of thing. And then you can either build them like dodgy, which they're not particularly brilliant at, but they're alright because they're hero. And uh, tanky, like they use all the stats. Uh, so let's see, let's see what Brunom did with these nerds. And they combine to be the big man. Okay, he went tanky with their upgrades, so what does he do with their thing? Yeah, and then he goes tanky with their... Yeah, there you go, there you go. So it's the two bros, and then... Volfog He will give four punching four dodging and Kazuma in the Valhawk Get one of each thing Okay, he wants enough energy to not get toasted because his shit's expensive. And then Volfog. And Volfog can get a couple of. thingies. Where is he? Yeah, he gets one of them and one of them. And every upgrade you give the brothers, again, like their uh, skill points. It's shared between them, so Gal Gaga stuff is just really good for in terms of efficiency. Because you like for upgrading the big fella, you get the two little ones and him combined, so it's so good. I'll give him another energy. Why not? Why not? Why not? And we've got the support defense thing. Like we could give it to uh, guy. There's like there's no limit. You can give the dude as many things as you got. Like I think you can have up to three or four support actions, same as normal. But but it's I think it's between him and bless in the store. So he can just hang out there and be a big piece of shit. But you know what, guy? Let's do guy. He's basically invincible anyway. And we've got no spare bits now. Good, good, good. This 
mission six. Huh? What's mission six? What's mission six? Triple G's close call. Shoot down EI fifteen and pick a man dagger. Oh, gun glue! Volfog's uh, two friends are Gundoba, which has got a dog, like a dog hat, and the gun glue. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Let's uh, go. Let's see the next one then, shall we? And on second playthroughs, you can buy parts, which is really good. But this isn't one of them yet. I think you also keep all the shit that you buy. Like, that, that you equip them, so he'll always have support defense on every run through we do. Which uh, ain't bad. Yeah, so let's do one last one. And then uh, we'll call it a uh, night. Okay, so Kazuma writes in his little log. Uh, the, uh, he didn't really get the Earth vacation that he bargained for. Uh, he got roped into fighting Mazenga, and he saw its pilot self-destruct to defeat the enemy. He only knew uh, Koji for a short time, but he figures he was a pretty good guy. And uh, while he's there talking with Tiger, the rest of Valstork are going to get a tour of the Triple G base. But he's going to take whatever vacation he can before returning to space. So. Here's Akane, who is amazed that guy is a cyborg, and he explains he got hit by a meteor two years ago. Well, he was in space, he didn't just fall out of the sky, like he was in space. He was this pilot in a space shuttle, didn't just fall him, and uh, then landed in Tokyo. And uh, they had to rebuild his body. Uh, and there's Mikoto. Uh, uh, she was a high school classmate of guys, and she followed him into Triple G, and, uh, and I was like, ah, more than just a high school sweetheart, hmm? But she super loves him. Uh, Norris is more impressed that uh, Cybertech has advanced this far. He's heard another the successful cases of uh, full conversion cyborgs. And Guy's like, yeah, I got the G-Stone in my body. And he shows it. And it's like, holy shit. What the fuck? And he says it's a little green gem that was bestowed on mankind by Galien. Who appeared at the same time as the Meteor. And it's an infinite information circuit. And uh, Guy's power source, is, if you listen to it, is dad. Is that your dad? Yeah, Leo Shishio. Uh, he's uh, on the staff too. He's one of the world's ten great brains and an expert in super AI theory and robotics. And uh, and as for what the hell Galien is, uh, Horace tells Agony, it's like, oh, it's like a little grey man with huge red eyes and spindly limbs. He's a little alien. Galien, huh? He's like, what? No, that's fucked up. And the guy's like, actually, it's a robot lion from outer space, and it saved my life, and is the main middle bit of Gal Gaigar. And uh, Horace gets another stupid Horace. He's like, I was joking. He's like, please continue, guy. And then guy says, Galen's the skeleton around which the Gal machines join in final fusion to make Gal Gaigar. And uh, Duran Quattro expected Gal Gaigar to be a hybrid of space and Earth origin due to its uh, amazing power. They're curious. Why does a secret organization attached to the Federation Executive Office have this much cool stuff? And then uh, they explain uh, Triple G's purpose is to research and deploy anti Zondar tech. And they're a species of living robot that's been making uh, Tokyo hell. Uh, you attach a Zondar metal to a human, and that agglomerates nearby machinery to form a giant robot. Customer's like, what the heck happens to the humans? You become the cause. And Guy says, that's our job. We gotta destroy the robot and rescue the person. Extracting the core is his job, and then someone else has to do the rest and purify him. We then get introduced to Hyoryu and Enryu as they walk into the room, returning from maintenance. And Customer's like, holy shit, the robots are talking. And they're like, uh, yeah, why wouldn't we be a sentient, feeling super AI robots? Uh, Mikoto asks, uh, and, uh, where's Ushio? There he is. There's, uh, Ushiyama Kazuo, who tells her that Volfog's busy, uh, with another mission, as usual. Uh, but he says, I'm the dude in charge of maintenance, and, uh, Horace says, ah, I bet everyone calls you Ushi. And Akane's like, are you really, like, a fucking trailer, dude? I, that's your guess, you could figure out dude's nicknames. 
Then he's like, damn, you're civilians? And then Kazuma confirms that we're simply freedom-loving spacefarers, devoid of any governmental entanglements. It's like, wow, I'm surprised you're being given a tour at Triple G along with the preventers and the Space Knights. The guy asks about Tekka Man Blade, and it's like, nah, D-Boy's locked in his room, sulking. And then Noel says he's not Blade anymore. His system box broke, he's just a D-Boy. But, he says, he still hates Random, as if they killed his own parents, but he can't fight him. And the uh, guy says he'd hope to speak to D-Boy at least once. Fucking his dad walks in, Leo, and he's like, Ooh, this problem's a little more delicate than I expected, and with him is... Millie. And she's an operator with the Space Knights, and she uh, tells Noel, who's surprised she's there, that she, Honda, and Levin have been here for a little while. Uh, it seems the Space Knights headquarters have been moved to Triple G, and the organization merged, and uh, Leo's like, yeah, maybe we'll be able to help D-Boy after all. You can't make any guarantees, but uh, Honda and Levin's gadget is doing some final tuning as they speak. Uh, Kazuma's going to run off and tell D-Boy the good news, and Guy's like, hmm... D-Boy, he was made a tech man against his will. Uh, what's the deal there? Hmm. But he thinks about it. Mikoto uh, has uh, Ushiyama guide everybody while she goes upstairs to fetch Mamoru. Uh, Akane asks, uh, and uh, Mikoto says that the SDC is a front for Triple G. Uh, and Tiger is the chief of both organizations, which makes him a pretty busy guy. Ushiyama warns that she'll have to watch out she doesn't arouse suspicions of a certain high school field trip going uh, on upstairs. Like, there's some kids here right now, you gotta... Don't talk about our secret business. Bernard's here and he's fucking drunk and sucks. And he's got Mihiro with him and he's drunk. And, uh... She's like... Uh, why didn't why didn't you keep up with the others? He's like, I needed to get more booze. And, uh... She's like, I can't really guide you around though, because I've never been here before. And then Bernard says, Ah, being feeling like I'm lost with a kid sucks. And Mira says, I don't like being treated like a kid. I'm a fully fledged member of the Valsort family. And he's like, Yeah, well, maybe when you've grown like any boobs at all and you're a grown up, then maybe you can talk about being treated by a kid. And she's just like, Lich, pervert, drunk, I hate you. Why aren't you cool anymore? Like you were on the orbital ring. And he's like, I didn't have any booze then. Ha ha ha! I'm an alcoholic! Uah! And then Levin comes in and he's like, what are you doing here in this restricted area? And then Burn is like, sorry little lady. And he's like, oh, uh, sorry, I mean little queer because Levin's androgynous and Bernard's drunk and awful. And he's like, well, are you really just going to say that? But before Levin can tell him out, in comes Honda, this dude with the mustache. is like, yo Levin, get back and help with the final AI testing. And Mihiro asks, uh, politely for help, and he's like, can you help us get back outside? He's like, yeah, alright, sure. And, uh, he's not gonna, and, uh... And then, uh, Bernard starts singing Danny Boy some more, and Levin's like, cut that out right now! If you're gonna be rude to me, I'm not gonna let you sing, asshole. But, a certain robotic voice starts singing the song also, Danny Boy. And that's Pegas, we'll meet him soon. Kegurazaka lets the students loose, uh, tell them to gather info for the SDC uh, mission and what they're doing and their principles. And she's leaving Chidori as the class representative to look after Sosuke and says, Any problems that happen will reflect badly on the entire school, which means we won't get to go on a trip to Okinawa, which uh, is very important. Uh, Sosuke sees that Chidori's feeling tired and he offers uh, some of his lunch that's left, uh, left over. And she's like, What the hell is it? Beef jerky! Like, it smells bad. He's like, it's been optimized for portability and longevity and low cost. Just try some before you knock it. And she says, I don't really feel the need for training my jaw. But Kazama, this guy who sucks, he's not the other one. Kazuma, he's Kazama. And uh, he's like, oh, these uh, African seed rations are delicious though. Mm. And Sosuke says, yes, gourmets all over the world and army magazines agree that these are the most tasteless rations ever made. But... You get used to it soon enough. And then uh, Chidri is like, I'm just going to leave you two military nerds alone. And then she's going to think about what happened last night. And she explains how Sosuke was found on her veranda holding her underwear. It's like, that's weird. And she's like, I'm sure he had a really good reason for doing it. But 
you know, it was still weird. And he did, like, help us in the robot attack, right? And then she starts remembering how scared she was and thinks she was going to die. And then Sasuke is like, you okay? And she says, if you really care about me, just stay quiet today. He's like, Roger. And then he runs into Mamoru. And Mamoru's like, thanks for helping protect uh, Hana-chan and the others. And Sasuke says, I need no thanks for doing what was part of my mission. And then Mamoru introduces himself to the girls. And then they're like, well, what are you doing here at the SDC? And he's like, oh, uh, I uh, got, gotta go. And he runs off. He's like, his class isn't part of it. And then Chidori says, I wish uh, he could donate some of that kid. It seems pretty responsible and on the ball. I wish he could donate some of that to certain other people I know. Like, and, but he's wandering off to a restricted part of the base. And Sosuke is like, hmm. I don't think he's a random child. I think that that kid may in fact be a terrorist. That's why he made uh, contact with Chidori. It's advanced recon. Hmm. So he starts muttering to himself about how the girl must have been a decoy and the boy was the real operative. And this time, he must be out to blow up the Triple G, making it easier to ch kill Chidori in all the chaos. It's like, what are you doing? And then he tells Chidori to leave everyone out of the SDC to somewhere safe. It's like, no time to explain. So he, uh, he runs off to find Mamoru. And she's like, what? Fuck, and runs after him. He says, I've got to stop him before he causes too much trouble. So uh, Kyoko and Kazuma are left alone. And from the scary look on Sosuke's face, they think something scary is going to be going on. So they're going to go and tell their teacher Kagurazaka, but they run into Fritz, Tekaman Dagger. And he's on his way to the restricted area too, and he's like, Get out of my way, kids! Or else! I'm like, oh. Then, they run into Pizza! He's like, Dang, and a goddamn Tekaman's here too! Boo. No, what? And he mumbles that more prey has presented itself. I hope Pensionyon gets a move on. Kazuma finds D Boy and fills him in on the good news, and they kind of give him his powers back, come to the lab and see guys work. And D Boy's like, hell yeah, I can fight it again. But then Fritz comes in and he's like, don't get your hopes up, nerd. I'm gonna cut you to ribbons while you're helpless. Tekse Daga. And now here we are, mission six. Triple G by the skin of its teeth. Warning. Uh, this lady in Gal Gal Gal. No! Yeah, she's American and she speaks really simple Japanese. And if you watch Gal Gal Gal, it's obvious that she speaks uh, uh, like a completely different style to everybody else. She does lots of des desu desu. So she's like, speaks tourist Japanese. But oh no, random attacking from above and the satellites didn't attack. Spot him due to an error. Shit. And the kid's like, oh god, Radam. Shit, maybe Sosuke was right to order an evacuation. But him and Chidori are still inside. Ooh. So it's like, well, here we go. And Freeman is sure they're after D Boy. And unfortunately, Bay Tower Base is uh, having a lot of system failures. The maintenance hangar is shut tight and there's no way to let the units inside out. Ooh. But luckily, the Valstalk's ready to go. And uh, Bless says, uh, I'll cancel uh, one of these debts I owe you, Tiger. He's like, sure thing, get on it. The Dragon Bros sneak out of their hangar manually and uh, hold the fort until everybody else can get out. And uh, Tessa insists on helping Tiger find out whatever brought the system down. She's not worried about her own safety. Besides, who could uh, break in Toji's code? Is no one to be trifled with. She asks for a keyboard. And then falls over. It's like, are you okay? It's like, yeah, yeah, no, I am. I'm a genius, really, honest. And uh, she tells uh, in Toji this guy who sucks and tells him to bathe some bathe uh, sometime because he stinks. And he's like, I've been busy. But she calls Callan in uh, for backup from Mao and Kurtz. And uh, Leo and Tiger say the system crashes into something the Radom do, and it's probably Zondar doing something, which means this is only the beginning of our troubles. And uh, here we are. Time to fuck, I guess. Let's get these nerds on a building. Wait, which one's the one with the longest range move? I think him, so it's fine. 
Yep, yeah, I'll stand. No, don't unite. Just stand there. Dagger uh, thinks that everybody raising hell outside will keep him from being interrupted, uh, like he was on the orbital ring. So uh, time for him to murder D boy. D boy and uh, Kazuma run and tell everybody that Dagger's here. And he's like, no oh, man, they can't stop me. Uh, Kazuma is uh, worried about leaving D boy alone with Dagger, but he's like, I'm gonna make it to the hangar one way or another. And then Dagger's like, ah, sweet of you to let your friend escape. And D boy's like, I have no need of friends or parents or siblings or nothing. And then uh, Dagger's like, Blade, blame it. Uh, it's all you should blame all your bullshit that's happening to you on your betrayal of the Radom. Uh, Entoji and Tessa can't keep up with the intrudo, seems to be countering any attempt to, to cut off his uh, connection. And Entoji knows there's only one person that could show such skill. Iru Busaki, who's here going, <laughs> and he's Entoji's rival for chief programmer two years ago when it was being built. And uh, it's pretty clear he's been zonderized and he's got to be somewhere inside the base. Luckily, uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever, zonder, shit. But luckily, Mamoru's inside the base, so uh, he can go in and purify it. But unfortunately, while he's in the base, that means the zonder might kill him. Uh, and if he dies, that's it, because we can't stop the zondars anymore, and we're over. So Tiger tells Makoto to uh, to tell Guy to find Mamoru and take the invader out. And now we just gotta wait for these idiots to get up on the the bros. Fucking stand in the seat doing wigglies. <coughs> nice bop, buddy. Cuts and uh, mouth shop, and they're like, "Oh, I don't like the random disrupting uh, the charge to save the angel." But Kalanin uh, has ordered them to destroy the random at once, and uh, Kurt's like, "Jeez, the irony of Sasuke guarding the pretty girl. Why have to smash all the bugs?" And then uh, we show up. Bless says, uh, "Mihiro waiting in the dock for Kazuma because he's still somewhere in the base getting D boy." Uh, Noin recognizes the uh, Mithril Arm Slaves as the next generations of whatever the Federation Army uses, and Duo says they're the richest squadron on Earth. Uh, Mecha Collector's Paradise. But anyway, while the fight's going on, uh, Silver Humor, this guy, uh, warns that uh, the Zondar inside the base is going to emerge sooner or later. And Noel is like, dang it, Aki, we haven't heard from D-Boy yet, and this sucks. He might not be able to fight, but he shouldn't be moping either. Noel fucking is, is a piece of shit. Oh, that dude's definitely just fucking sulking or whatever. What a piece of shit garbage man from hell. Bop that guy, and then we unite. And that gets us another support attack. Oh, she killed him anyway, so it's fine. Is that good, buddy? change their music once we unlock the other one, but I don't think we've got it yet. The A-Team song from Bonta. Turn into a fucking thing, Noin. Dagger has finally cornered D-Boy, and it seems like Kazma wasn't uh, in time after all. But, before he can kill him... Bonk! Pizza. He's like, ah, my first prey. Dagger's like, shit, a warrior from the legendary Red Planet! 
wait a minute, you're a Zondarian! And Pizza's like, yeah, I'm gonna kick your shit ass, because I hate Radom. And Dagger's like, good, I want to try uh, against uh, my hand against one of the Red Planet's warriors, Zondarian or not. And Lily Boy's gonna use this chance to fucking book it. And Dagger's like, Blade, no! And Pizza's like, nope, you should pay attention to me, big fella. And Dagger's annoyed. Sword cut, chopping away the wriggly tentacles, you did it. Now we do the double tomfer. Splat the bug. Nice work. And I believe when these guys split, they have the same morale as what they had when they were combined, so again, two for one. Uh, pizza's impressed uh, how a Radam. Uh, who are normally staunch holdouts against mechanization, which is the Zondar end goal is to turn everything into robots. They're like, you're doing pretty good! And Dagger's like, yeah, you ain't so bad, but I'll make you pay for letting D-Boy escape. Mamoru then blunders into these two idiots fighting. He's like, oh, shit, I recognize that guy. Uh. And Boots was like, oh, shit, Dagger, I need to uh, stop this for a second. I need to kill this kid because he's got the power of the G-Stones. And then uh, Pizza gets his arm just totally fucking wrecked when Mamoru activates his power and uh, fights back. Sosuke comes in from another direction just in time to see uh, Pizza's uh, plan. He's like, shit. You wanna. He's like, shit, he's trying to kill that boy. Ugh, before the boy kills him. Oh no. And unfortunately, his gun's no use against the Red Planet's warrior, but we've got someone who is useful. Guy. The guy uh, fills Mamoru in on things, tells him to run away, but Mamoru's not going anywhere until he figures out where the Zondar he sensed is. And guy's like, well, I can't really argue with that, but bail if you sense any danger. Uh, Mamoru uh, gets uh, Sosuke to help him, which means the guy's got to face the fucking dagger and pizza by himself. And as we know, no one can defeat pizza. Dagger recognizes Guy as an heir of the Green Planet's legacy. And uh, he's like, whatever, you can fight the Red Planet guy, I'm gonna go find D-Boy. And Pooch is like, I don't give a shit, I mostly just wanna... My real objective coming here was fighting you, guy. Pizza! Okay, can she make it to heal the, the cool guy? Yeah, she can, good. The friendship and the Commandora Doing pretty good there. Oh, because of that, they can't uh, join again now. But that's fine, that's fine. Because we can do this. I was hoping that they would push uh, Mao out of the way, but they didn't. Uh, D-Boy has reached Millie in the hangar, and she says, we got a way to restore your powers. Give me your crystal. Dagger comes in, he's like, that's a fast blade. When suddenly... Bonk! Kazuma's there, and he's driving a power loader from the Space Knights, which is like the thing from Aliens. And, uh... 
he's like, nice work, kid. And then uh, Kazuma calls uh, Levin a queer, like Bernard did, because I guess he's figured out that that's good. But Levin's like, keep it up, kid. And uh, Bernard's here too, and uh, he's like, dang it, why we always got to keep meeting up like this? And this gives uh, the science team enough time to set up the tech set. But there's no power in the base. They can't boot the thing up. Just got to wait for everything to come back online. Kazma and Bernard are ready to fight with Dagger until that can happen. And uh, Kazma tells D-Boy not to give up yet. He should have uh, faith in his companions uh, that they'll win the fight. But yeah, I guess uh, Kazma decided that everyone said Bernard was cool, so he's going to copy him and be a shithead. And this is their combo attack, and it's really good. <laughs> Even if he fucking fell over. the One of the gold ones is really clumsy as well. I think the two ch Chinese ones are really good, though. I don't think they have any issues. Oh, look at this shit. Strafing. Sick drifting. But yeah, so Bernard sucks and he's given Kazuma a bad habit already. Inside the base, Mamoru's found the Zonda. Sosuke apologies to Mamoru for mistaking as someone other than a proud warrior of Triple G. Uh, but before they can get to the Zonda, Penshinyon is shown up and is like, I expected you to come this way. And Sosuke is like, shit, it's the Zonda commander. But luckily, unseen ally, Volfog. Oh, fuck. Uh, he tells uh, Maru to take Uru 7, it's Sosuke, and then uh, return uh, the Zonda to human. Uru 7? He's like, that's me, I'll explain later. Zonda! For some reason, Chidori's here as well, and she uh, yells uh, to Sosuke to put that gun he keeps around uh, for good use for something. He's like, I need you to tell me that! Uh, the gun? Kind of useless, but don't worry. He's got a high voltage stun gun, and uh, that proves quite uh, useful. Oh! Oh! So it says, uh, that little stun she gave it has given Tessa, has like, uh, given uh, them enough time to run the counter of, um, program, and it works. Uh, and Toji uh, murmurs to Inubusaka that it's too late to resist. As usual, he's forgotten something critically important. No person and no system in this world is perfect, and that's why people go on improving, building on their past mistakes and defeats. You shouldn't just give up, you should use that as fuel to keep on going. And he said, uh, he and Tessa used something he never had to fix all the holes he opened. Their spirit to confront adversity, the touchstone of a true hero. And then uh, Zonda is like, Zonda! And uh, runs away as everything comes online. Let's move Q to fire up uh, the thing. Fire up Pegasus. What the heck's that? It's a modified human uh, cargo robot. And uh, Pegasus beat the shit out of that shitty Tekka man. Pegasus. But uh, we've made a helper for D-Boy. Uh, Honda says that uh, D-Boy, if he gets in, he'll be able to text it. So get inside the fucking text set. So get inside the thing. Pegas text Pegas. Tekka Man Blade. Of course, it works. And uh, D uh, now Dagger's got to face someone on uh, even terms. Freeman says that Pegasus can complete the circuit that once required the crystal, and uh, the light inside Pegasus creates the same matter transforming field, so Deepwood can transform, and Dagger is super pissed, and it's like, I'll summon more bugs, fuck you. D Boy apologizes to Noel and Aki for being out of action and promises to make up for the lost, uh, lost time. And Aki is like, Damn, D Boy, you're a true space knight. Uh, 
Uh, that gave enough time for Kazuma and a big Volfog, uh, which is Volfog combined with Gunglu and Gundoba to make it outside. And the Bliss is like, nice work Kazuma, but maybe don't be a jerk and call people names. But watch out, the Zondar's coming. But not just the Zondar, hella Zondarized robots. And uh, unfortunately the Zondar is combined with some spare parts used for Gal Gai Gar. It's like a fake Gal Gai Gar. And the Horus calls it Kal Kai Car because he's a fucking idiot and everyone's like, stupid Horus. But in any case, we've all been given the anti-Zondar treatment so we're fine. Uh, Guy has survived his running with pizza and calls for Galian. And there he is. Uh, yeah, now they're Gygar. Guardian. Yeah, so they're uh, Gygar. Uh, Tiger orders final fusion! So a guy can yank out the Zonda core, but Miss Swan here says it's no good, the guidance programs have uh, all been completely erased, and the guy machines can't launch anyway. So a guy says, now it's time to take a stand. Everyone, are you ready? And his humor, leave Stealth Gal to me. Liner Gal is okay too. This is Drill Gal, because Yushimari is prepared. You can combine it any time. And his lady, you're combining it, they're gonna control the Gal machines manually. And Minato, manual controlled final fusion success rate is 31.2%. That's too dangerous! Minato, like most of the time, he's just fucking devastated and scared and worried that everything's gonna fuck up. Chief, if we support the combination from here, the success rate will rise to 60%. And Humor says, each person is about 10%, so if we add our courage, it'll make it 100%. And uh, Mihiro says, I don't think. Maths works that way, and Kazuma is like, "Still, this is making me so hot-blooded." But let's go, Triple G. Tai gives the okay, and uh, Entoji uh, final fusion <laughs> authorized. He smashes the thing. Entoji inwardly tells Inuyasaki to watch the heroic power of the organization he tried to destroy. Let's go, final fusion. Uh, Zonda tries to. Uh, Interfere, but D Boy flies over, gets in the way. He's like, "Gotta give you time, buddy. Time for a final fusion." Mm -hmm. Gao, guy, ga. Damn, comes with like, "Nice job, guy." Now everyone's ready. Uh, let's fuck him up. Let's give the order to wipe out the Radom and the Zonda. And Kazuma is eager to do so. He wants to repay Dagger for the time he wasted running around. And uh, Blade uh, calls Dagger and he's like, let's finish this. So, uh, Tekka Man now has uh, Pegasus and he can fly and if he dies, he just ejects him. And he's still alive and it's fine and he gets some extra moves. And uh, Pegasus has his own set of spirit commands, including uh, Accelerate, so it's really good. And Snipe is also really good for Voltekka. And then uh, Volfog has combined with the bike and like he's the same guy uh, but he's combined with uh, the helicopter and the bike to form big Volfog. He's lost a little bit of mobility like he's not as good at dodging but he's got loads more health, loads more armor, he's got some new attacks and more range and he's uh, really good. He's really good. But yeah, the big bad boy here is this idiot. The fake Gal Gai Gar, who sucks. But we'll just send, uh... But yeah, he can only attack, uh, 1 to 4. Yeah, his longest range attack is 1 to 4, same as Guy's. And, his we and it's his weakest move, so as long as we can just sit 4 squares away from him, he can't do shit. But all these guys down the bottom will take out these idiots. Because they're all trash. Couple of Birdmen, some Taurus, a Garada, Doubluses and a... I don't think they're even Gunsbacks, are they? Yeah, they're the other shitty things. Oh, 
I really want to stand on that fucking building though. Fine. Ooh, that's uh, accuracy hurts. Be sure. I mean, that's because this moves. It's not even that bad. Damn. Damn. That's a lot of bullets, buddy. He's fucking heard that guy with his magnum. <laughs> Let's shoot this guy in the sea because he's got. Oh, it was a beam! I forgot that the beam shot launcher was a beam weapon, oddly enough. Fucked up, right? And he's using it to shoot all the bugs. And uh still our good friend. And the dagger is of course gonna just rush uh, blade as usual. Oh, she used your shield, buddy. It's okay, they're gonna combine and have a good time anyway. If you combine and then heal them when they split, they'll have the whatever percentage of health he had as the big one. And it's really good. But Bless already, you know, topest of top tier murders. Just doing dodging. He's also is uh, he's also got a shield. The I think he spins the blades around. If they can ever hit him. And I'm pretty sure that guy is going to be invincible to a Taurus. Yep. Protect shade. It's good. And here's the fake Gagaga, and it sucks. Oh, and then the drill on the chest. Fuck. Zondar menace. First, do a long shot, then we'll combine, and then Noin can heal him. I've got this long chain of guys to get some bops with. Oh, and they can't be supported by that dude anyway because uh, they can't fly. Like in other games, you need to fly to support people who can fly, but if you're flying, you can support people on the ground. But uh, I think in this game, things that are flying generally can't go on the ground, like planes and stuff, they can't go on the ground at all. So close. 
close. So close. You know what? Sneak them a little bit. Tougher to in babies. For when one of these guys attacks them or my good friend. Guided missile. Very nice. Actually, you know what? That's fine. They can murder this guy. And Volfog will have the good time. Now, Volfox thing sounds like a fucking newsreel thing, so I gotta change his music too. To oh, he's not in the sky though, so he can't be protected by our good friend. It's okay, he'll be protected and assisted by Kazuma instead. Fuckers not in the sea, they're all toast now. Real mature dagger. Broken Magnum? It's also why uh, in Gespenst they have the Broken Phantom and then, no, it's the Jet Phantom and Jet Magnum and it upgrades to the Phantom because Gaga -ga goes from Magnum to Phantom and that's also a reference to another previous thing as well. Look at these fuckers. Shooting Gaga -ga with bullets, he's invincible. Well, one night that dude missed, but you know. These guys. No, to attack that guy from outside his attack range? Just a bunch of bullshit, if you ask me. Oh, see, so, yeah, and okay, so Galgaigar can defend him because he can fly. Right, yeah, so the reason that planes and shit can't is because they actually physically cannot get on the ground. If you can change your level, then you can. Zonda! Ain't gonna work, buddy, but nice try. Plane, train, and the little drill tank. Dealt with all that shit up there. Thank you. I need to get into a more central position to attack these nerds.
I transform him, then these should be able to do their thing. Yeah, there you go. Oh, he's the Beyblade! Never touch a spinning bay. idiots down here Let's see if he's got what Dagger says to Blade and what they're yelling at other than You betrayed me and fucked up my face and I hate you! Let's see how you do with a pile of bullshit! Yeah Dagger, our battle ends here! Oh it will end Blade! The other Tekkermen are awakening, I cannot afford to fail again! The other Tekkermen? You mean... There's no need to worry, Blade, because you're going to die first! Ah! This shitty move that can't do nothing to nobody. Invincible. Protect Shade, it's good. Broken Magnum that guy. Broken Magnum that guy. Oh, and then I gotta fly over and deal with that dude person. Oh, that fucker just killed. Oh, that dude denied me one murder out of spite. What a fucking jerk. Ah. Oh. Again, I should have checked that it was a beam or not. But I thought, you know, it's only got one weapon, that wouldn't be a beam, so it's not fucking worthless. But, uh, no, it was. It was, it, uh, it's bad. Now, I want to kill this goddamn Tekka man, because he drops... I think he might drop multi combo. Snipe. Big whiffs. Okay, I hope that the thing doesn't end when you kill this guy. Okay, you get gunfight from this thing. And a C module and a propellant tank, but the propellant tank will sell. Oh, 
hell and heaven. It's good. One hand's good and one hand's bad. Don't wipe your butt with the bad hand or the good hand. Whichever one's worse. Get out of here, Steam Up Taylor. Ruining my life. Cow Guy God did it! Oh, dang it! Uh, if uh, you kill it another way, then he does hell and heaven on it. If you use hell and heaven on it, and it does it, and cuts out the little cutscene. Uh, uh, Pitching on Peach, like, dang, we got uh, got to withdraw, and Peach uh, vows that he'll one day tell uh, the score with the cyborg guy. Uh, D Boy tells Dagger that now the Zondar are gone, it's Radom's turn next. And Dagger tells Blade, don't be absurd, everyone here has got one choice, accept the Radom or face destruction. And Blade's like, nah, I'm gonna, nah, I'm gonna choose not that. And he's like, well, I'll destroy you personally then, nerd. Let's use our good friend Big Volfog's biggest attack, the split into Gundobra and Gunglue. Yeah, see, one's got like a dog head. You'll see, because they get a good cut in. Yeah, see, the one on the left. And then they reform Big Volfog. Got him! Eat the shit around them, fuck. Yeah, that gave us multi combo. There you go. Anyway, he's fucking dead. He sucks. Uh, if we'd had Kazuma fight him, he goes, You sticky bastard. I'll, I still owe you for the orbital ring. Annoying whelp. It'd be so much easier to destroy Blade without your meddling. Don't you know, taking it. Take an easy way out is what leads people to ruin. Oh wait, I guess it don't matter how it works for people, because you're around them. Fucking, cause I guess it don't matter about people, because you ain't one. <laughs> yeah, we've got an Apogee motor, which is plus movement and agility, and multi-combat agility, uh, mobility. Anyway, Dagger can't believe that he, one of Radom's Decamen, could be destroyed here. Radom's supposed to be the one chance life forms have for survival. And Leo's like, oh. Oh, that's interesting. What's that? And then with his dying breath, Dagger's like, Blade! Because you refuse the random, that will lead to your ruin! Blah! And he blows up and he's dead. Anyway, we're pretty satisfied with all our work. We destroyed uh, our first uh, random Tekka man, but uh, Freeman is certain that that one won't be the last. D-Boy thinks to himself that one day he'll go to wherever Fritz has gone, but before that day he's got things to do. Uh, Mikoto confirms the destruction of the Radom and the Zondar, and uh, Miss Swan uh, tells us that Mamoru is also fully purified Unobusaki. Lady Un uh, never expected the joint operation between the Triple G, Space Knights, the Frenters, and Mithril to get started like this, but it's worked out pretty good. Uh, Tess is convinced that it's, this is proof of how powerful we could be, and uh, uh, but we definitely need to get more powerful if we're going to protect Earth from all threats. Inubusaki's doing much better now that Mamoru and Entoji have opened his eyes. And uh, Mamoru says, I didn't do much. And uh, Inubusaki says, remember your newfound strength of heart, Mamoru. No, the other way around. Mamoru tells Inubusaki that. Okay, sure. That was a weird way of writing that. Uh, Sosuke uh, asks uh, Mamoru, uh, it's like, so where did you get your power from? And she reads, uh, like, what the heck? Are you kidding? He can fly, and he can glow green, and he can dissolve monsters, and then Mary's like, I don't know if it's ESP or what, but God must have given it to me to protect my family and friends, and all mankind. He says, just don't tell anybody that I'm a Triple G secret agent, unless my family and friends get all worried. And uh, Chidori and Sasuke are like, yep, sure. And uh, he leads them back to their friends. 
Sosuke uh, says that uh, he like approves. He's like, ah, yes, the young warrior's resolve to not mix other people up in his own problems is truly admirable. And Chidori listens, nonplussed. And he's like, this guy is fucking crazy. And uh, Sosuke mutters that this mission has made him painfully aware just how low on the power scale he is compared to everybody who just did that thing. He's got to learn better how to pick his time and place and has to improve his guns and ammo and other gear. And then she slaps him again, probably with the fan, and says, uh, Don't cause any trouble during the Okinawa trip. He says, I'll carry out my mission to the fullest. He's like, that doesn't really help me at all. Anyway, Tess has finished uh, the final preparations to start the plan, and she uh, added some terrorism experts, regional revolt, and other shadowy topics to our forces. Uh, we'll never know the full extent of their capabilities, but it'll be great to have uh, those nerds on our side. Mysterious one man walks in, he's like, Oh, sorry, I missed the beautiful Mithril Commander. And he's like, Oh, it's stupid war correspondent Bullzak Asimov. Here from the Federation Army. His appointment was tomorrow, but he couldn't sit here and, like, couldn't wait until, because there was a chance to see Attack Command Blade and Colonel Testarossa in action. And Freeman's just like, Mind your manners and don't abuse the free pass you got, alright? You've barged into a combat command facility, not a lounge. He's like, oh, well, so yeah, sorry, bye, and leaves. And Lady Yun's like, hmm, the Federation Army's keeping a pretty close eye on us. And Freeman says it's probably Corbett angling to assimilate all the forces into the military. Uh, the interesting question, though, is where's Corbett got his backing from? But luckily, we've got a lot of friends, too. And uh, one of them is Leo's brother. But uh, he's like, I'm not sure how useful his robots will be in combat, because my brother is not as good as me. Fucking okay, Leo. But Leo and Freeman uh, leave the official contract sign in uh, with Bless Up to Tiger while they uh, analyze uh, the enemy movements. Apparently, the Radom and Zonda are actually at odds from today's battle. They f fight each other, and uh, they seem to be fighting each other on a galactic scale, which is the Zonda want to mechanize everything to stop the Radom from taking over, and the Radom want to radomize everything to stop the Zonda taking over. Add in the evil looters, and they got a sticky triangle. News of Dagger's death uh, to Blade and Friends has reached uh, Omega and the other Tekkermen's ears, and one of the other Tekkermen, who's the one at the top, who I believe is Tekkermen Evil, says, It's my turn to try my hand on Blade, and Lord Omega's like, Yep, sure. But hurry, the Evil Looter's main force approaches, and the Zondar grows stronger with each passing day. And uh, should they find out the legacy of the Green Planet lives on on Earth, they might activate their master program. And that means the Earth will become the battlefield to determine the rulership of the entire galaxy. Uh, Omega gives Tekkerman evil, yeah, he's evil, uh, free reign to settle his score with Blade first, then tells him to make the Radom Blossoms uh, bloom the world over. And once he does, then uh, the true battle will begin. And uh, evil is confident that he can claim Blade's head. And then, last, uh, Blessed uh, gathers all the Vol Vol stock family together so Tiger can address them all. Uh, he says thanks for the previous battle, but Akane's like, no need to be so formal. We were just doing a job that was offered to us. And Horus says, ah, still, it'd be negligent if you didn't say something. And he compares it to a pro wrestler that didn't uh, keep his form. And then uh, Akane and uh, Huma start comparing notes about power moves and other wrestling stuff. And uh, Tiger is like, really, really got nothing better. And Shihomi's like, okay, let's get back on track. And then uh, Huma says, ah, oh, you're just like uh, very composed, just like your mother. He's like, oh, you know her? And he said, yeah, no spaceman my age doesn't, uh, no, uh, Yumi Ardigan. Y Yuma? I think Yuma Ardigan? And the Valstock family. Uh, but Bless, uh, is like, mm, yeah, enough about that. And Tiger's like, okay, yep, sure, because they, you know, they have a mutual agreement not to discuss their past. In any case, Triple G, known as one of the biggest organizations on Earth, is a new mission for the Valstock family. And it's, uh, fight alongside them to protect the Earth. Uh, during the last few weeks, uh, he's uh, sure we've seen the various threats that endanger the planet, and Tiger knows how much we've helped them fight. And as such, he wants to extend uh, the same invitation he gave the Space Knights, Mithra, and the Preventers. Work for us. And uh, Bless uh, says, uh, Sounds like a nice idea. And Kazuma is like, No! I'm a trailer, and I'll be damned if I, a trailer, will become the military's lackey. I'll help people in trouble, but I'm not going to fight someone else's war. And, uh,. Akane and Mihiro don't want to fight either, and at best that makes uh, things three for two for signing the deal, so... Tiger's like an unfortunate result, 
but Hume was like, damn, you just gonna let that slide, boss? Because Project W, like, really needs help from outside the military. And then Swan calls in, uh, Miss Swan calls in, is like, message, uh, for Bless from Bit. And it's Galen, and uh, he says uh, he's got a message he wants both uh, Bless and the Golden Tiger to hear. Uh, there's been an accident on Mars, and Tiger says, can you clarify it, Devil's Arm? It seems there's been some trouble brewing between the Dodesco and some new group of aliens, but he doesn't know what. Uh, he tells everybody should keep their eye on what Nurgle does next, and uh, Tiger thanks him for the help. And then uh, Kazma's like, dang, what the hell's uh, gonna happen to Earth with all these aliens menacing it? Jeez. Skill parts. Yes, yeah, so we've got gunfight and multi combo. We'll give multi com. Well, where's Kazuma? Kazuma, like every one of his weapons is combo. So if you give him multi combo now, like he gets it, but it means he can start chaining stuff together and having a good time. Now we just level up. He needs accuracy because he kind of fucked it last time, right? And guy who uh, just keep giving him melee and armor probably until he can't hit something, and then we'll have to give him something else. Uh, this guy gets the Apogee motor for sure. And then uh, Brunom, interestingly, gave Volfog the screw module because he's got a getting close. Uh, it'd probably be good on uh, Kazuba, so his beams aren't shitty in water, but since he's only got one. Beam. No, actually, his Vulcans might be beam too, but it doesn't matter. Um, and he like has to get in closer, being able to move good in this eight. And then we'll uh, sell not the gunfight. That's important, but we will sell the ammo, and then we'll upgrade our bullshit, shall we? Another one of them. And one of them. One of them. One of them. Another one of them out, and then get two of them. Mm, like it's nice for him, but he doesn't particularly need it. Make it, yeah, okay. The Dragon Bros can have it. The Dragon Bros are good. And you can change the setup. You can change him to be Little Volfog if you want. You can change Blade to not have Pegasus, but I don't know why you would. They're just better. Unless you desperately want him to be on the ground for some reason. And unless Volfog is only Siren Man and you want him to be Super Mega Dodge Man. Let's have a look at our top aces. Bless, Blade, and Guy. Ooh. Ooh. And then we'll save the gunfight for a certain sick man who's going to show up soon.
Okay, so Bruno at this point is upgraded the Valhawk and Valstock more with 3 4 3 3 2. Guys, 3 3 3, nothing 2. Tekaman, 4 energy. Well, that's uh, that's it. We did it. That's enough for now. Got a next mission. We find out what the stupid, weird, a mystery aliens that the other idiots have uh, come up with is. I think that's a safe state. But there you go. But anyway, I'm friggin' I'm friggin' Dunzo. So I'll see everybody next time. Don't know if I'll do anything tomorrow because it's Thursday and I go shopping Friday morning. And then Friday's Bob Bowl, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Thanks for coming in and enjoying anime as usual. I'll see you next time. Probably, uh, if not tomorrow, if I don't do something crazy like tomorrow, then it will probably be Saturday. See you Friday for Bob Bowl or whatever. See ya. Bye. Bye.